All right, man. Mighty Mouse, UFL, Underground Fight League on that YouTube. Go subscribe. I'm back here with another prison talk, man. My man, Chris. Look, this is my homeboy, man, from prison to the streets. Me and this dude have known each other for a good little while now, man. He's going to tell you a little bit about himself, what he's out here doing. Um, you talking about a guy that's had a lot of robots. You guys seen the video that I did the other day with my boy Casper. Um, you know, Casper was in and out of prison. Uh, Chris doesn't necessarily go back to prison, but he goes in and out of withdrawal. I'm going to let him. He's going to tell you the story, man. But right on. like when I'm with Chris, like, look, man, he's always in good health. He works out. This is this. He gets a way bigger than this. Like he gets, like I said, he gets to doing good, working out, training hard and shit. Next thing you know, you don't hear from Chris. Yeah. And then he's gone <laughs> for three or four months. But he always knows I'm always on his ass. Sure. And I'm always checking up on him. I don't know if he's got any other homeboys like me. No, but you're I'm right. always on his ass. And I know yeah. between me and Marine, when we don't hear from Chris for about three months, we already know what it is. There ain't no <laughs> question what's going on. You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. I'm gonna let him introduce himself. He can tell you a little bit about himself. He's also we're gonna start a station with him, man. And listen, guys, the reason why we're gonna start a station, man, is is it's gonna be therapy for him as well, man. Because look, for sure, with my for channel, sure. me helping people, man, working out, training, helping dudes get out of prison and get jobs and work and get their CDLs and watch dudes turn into millionaires, and that's not exaggerating. Um has kept me straight, man. Because when I get guys, I actually just had a guy hit me up after my live feed today and was like, yo, Mouse, like, it's because of you, bro. My family will tell you, it's because of you that I work out twice a day, bro. I got off the couch. I work out Hell twice yeah. a day, man. You know what I'm saying? I've, I've kicked addiction. I've replaced it with working out. Like, that type of shit is what keeps me going. So if we can get him, well, if we can get Chris on that same page when he sees he's helping other people out, he ain't got no choice but to stay clean. Because sure. he's gonna be, he's gonna be other people's motivation, man. Right. He's gonna and be I'll other be people's help. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna let Chris, I'm gonna let you take it away. You take it away. You tell him about right. yourself, man, and what's going on. Right on, man. All right, so yeah, I'm Chris, man. I'm 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 40 years old. Um I come from you know, I'm from Richmond. And um so and I met Mouse through through you know, through a good friend of mine, man. And um I'm a, I will say this too, Mouse, man, anytime um uh, you know, I'm out there and don't nobody hear from me. You, you always reach out to me like, What's, what the fuck's going on, man? What's, you know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, yeah, I commend you for that, man, because you're right. A lo whole lot of people don't do not do that, but a whole lot of people don't understand either. You know what I'm saying? I think I think you can relate. You know what I mean? Anyways, um, so, all right, so I'm going to start out real quick with just, uh, you know, what I'm going through right now. So I just recently um, have come. Uh, I, I just went to a 45-day a little inpatient rehab right out in the mountains somewhere in Galax. Um, and I, I was this, – this relapse, man, it was, it was particularly hard on me, man, because, because of the fact that I had been doing so well and it just almost like came out of nowhere. You know what I'm saying? And um, – you know, man, it's like if if I'm not constantly working on my recovery, right? Then it it it's like my the 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 disease of addiction uses guerrilla tactics, man, and it's like it'll come out of nowhere, man, and sneak up on you where you're most vulnerable, and you don't even know it. Um. So, anyways, man, um, my drug of choice was was heroin. Um, I started I started using heroin at the age of 17. I was a senior. I had a dope habit in senior, as a senior in high school, um, and I come from, you know, I come from a, a pretty good family, man. My my mom. I, I didn't really come up from the, you know, in the trenches or anything like that. My my mom and my my stepdad were, you know, as far as like financially financial wise, you know, we were I, always. I've, 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 I've talked to your mom before. Yeah, and and that's yeah. what I'm saying. My mom, my mom's a, a big fan of yours, bro, because she knows that. You know what I'm saying? You be calling me on my shit, and see, that's what I need, right? I need motherfuckers that are gonna call me on my bullshit, right? Not somebody who's gonna co-sign my bullshit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, so, anyways, man. Um, yeah. So, um, so I was a senior in high school. I was dating this chick, man. I'll never forget it. I was dating this chick. She was a little bit older than me. She come and pick me up from school one day, and uh, she said, "I got something I want you to try." So we went to her house. And I remember, I, I just remember it like it was yesterday, man. I pulled my, 
my history book out of my book bag and laid it on the table. And she laid a line of heroin out on for me. And I, I hit it, man. And it was like, this is this is what this is me right here. You know what I'm saying? I was just I loved the way that it made me feel, man. And um, and unfortunately, it became a lifestyle for me, man. It became a lifestyle. And I went from, you know, from figuring out, you know, what college I wanted to go to, to fucking, uh, <laughs> you know, basically ripping and running and trying to figure out where I'm going to sleep from one day to the next. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because see what happened is, man, when, uh, when you're, when you're involved in that lifestyle, man, you, you, you're a greasy motherfucker. And that's all there is to it. It's just, it, it, it goes along with the territory. You know, you're living saying? off the you're, land. You're basically going to do everything you need to do to get it. Right. And, and, and because, because of the physical aspect of an opiate addiction, it's like, man, I'll do anything just so I, so I don't get ill. So you don't get sick. That sickness is fucking a nightmare, bro. I mean, you got every symptom you can think of, you got it. Sweats, you're fucking uh, eyes watery, yawning, you're sh shitting on yourself, puking. Uh, I mean, it's it's a fucking nightmare, man. So so this is why people, you know, tend to act in a way that they would, you know, never dream of acting beforehand because they get, you know, they get hooked on this shit, man. And it 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 just it changes your whole perspective. It changes. It changes the way you operate, the way you move, and and it just it makes you somebody that you never in a in a million years thought it, that you would become, right? Yeah. Um so at the age of 19, now I had never been in trouble as a kid, right? The age of 19, I got indicted for uh distribution of cocaine and conspiracy to distribute cocaine, right? Um, all behind really and truthfully because i won't know like no big dope boy out there you know what i'm saying i was just doing a little something trying to support my my dope habit the girl i was with at the time her dope habit you know what i'm saying and so i kind of fell into that and next thing i know um a guy who i thought uh was a friend of mine wore a wire into my house and made some some buys for me right um so i'm a i'm a 19 year old kid never been in trouble had never really um you know, been subjected to any institution or anything like that, right? And yep. and boom, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm sitting there, they're, they're telling me, "Oh, you're gonna get ten years," and you know, yada yada yada, and so on and so forth. But um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, I mean, I'm 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 fucking freaking out. You know what I'm saying? The deputies <laughs> in there was fucking with me, you know, telling me I'm going away, and I'm like, oh, you know, ten years when you're. When you're 19 and ain't never ain't never been subjected to that shit, 10 years seems like a fucking life sentence. You know what I mean? Bro, I try, I, and I try to tell people that, bro. Like, it's like, man, they don't understand. And I got all these people that they don't understand, like, about the plea bargain system and stuff like that and having court-appointed attorneys and right. and the fear tactics that they try to throw at you. No doubt. I, get, I get all these hard heads on here, man, that just have never been to prison. They don't know nothing about it. Exactly. And uh, trust me, I'm a plea bargain king. I don't think I've ever been convicted of any. I don't think I ever have fought a case ever. I right. think everything I've ever done in Virginia, and this is a lot of other states from what I'm finding out as well, but in our state, the Commonwealth state of Virginia, your ass gonna take a penalty plea. I don't give For a sure. fuck. You're gonna take that plea or yep. do or do it the fuck time they want you to do. And they're gonna and, smoke your ass. And they're gonna smoke your fucking boots. And I'm telling you, I and I and I sit here and I listen to these hardheads. Oh, I would have never took a plea to that mouse. I would yeah. I would have fought that hand. Yeah, right, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, right, <laughs> bitch. Yeah, right, bitch. <laughs> you yeah. gonna lay your dumb ass down and you're gonna take whatever fucking penalty plea they throw at your ass. You got uh, that right. If, if you just don't care about your life. I, right. I don't think I don't think that I've ever had and I've had a million of you guys on here on my channel or uh, people that I know from prison personally. And right. I don't think that I have ever had anybody like Debo. I did one with him yesterday. Debo yeah. played guilty. Dude, he was facing federal time. He played guilty to two bank robbery charges, man. Huh. You know what I'm saying? Um, Debo could have got life in prison very easily. When they came okay. at Debo with the duty, when they came at Debo with a plea other than doing life in prison, when they came at him with 20 fucking years, he, he like, took that shit immediately. Dirty. I jumped yeah. right on it. 20 years. Fucking right. He jumped on 20 years. So if a person will take a 20 year plea bargain to, to a lot of people, that's unheard of all oh, 20 years. God, almighty, I would never take that. Or you spend the rest of your life in prison. Right, you're going to exactly. take 
you're gonna take it, man. And and I try to I try to tell people that shit all the time, man. But go ahead, finish saying what you were saying. So, I just wanted to break no, that and, down and, for these people, right, man. But the, and this is the thing too I, I, about the plea bargain. You know, that's how the system. If if people stop taking, they they do that shit because if people stop taking plea bargain, the Money. system would yeah, and it would come to a grinding halt, man. Because yep. it, and they do that. It, there's a reason. You know what I'm saying? There's a reason why they do that, man. And uh, and you're right, dude. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? They come at you with something that sounds, you know, not you'll take it and run with it and be happy. You know what no I'm doubt. saying? And unfortunately, that's the way it is, bro. But yeah. um, and, and you're right though. I don't mean to cut you off, but you're uh, exactly no. right. And we've talked about that before, man. If everybody would stop taking plea bargains, and this for the federal system too, because almost 100 percent of the people in the feds take plea bargains. It's yeah. worse than the state. Yeah. Um, the when the feds have you. It's already there. It's already a, a done deal, man. You know what I'm saying? So you're already going to take a plea bargain in the feds. Right. The state. We do have a fighting chance, but right. they scare people with these scare tactics and people believe the smoke that they throw at you that everybody takes pleas. I know in my yeah. state, I think I think it's like 98 percent take pleas um, and sure. the two percent and the two percent that don't. I don't fucking know them. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. So they're, they're not they're not anybody that I know in from prison that hasn't taken a plea bargain. But, yeah. you know, if everybody said, fuck you, I'm not taking that. You know how much money it would oh. cost? The state to run tr jury trials every Absolutely. fucking day. You know how Absolutely. backed up. You think the system's backed up now? You know how yeah. backed up the system would fucking be if everybody was like, "Fuck you." Yeah. Do what it you want to do. It would come to a fucking halt, man. It, it would, would. There's, there's, you know, and that's just how they operate, and that's why they yep. do the shit like that. You know, there's even cases I've heard, man, where, you know, they'll come at people with a, you know, th and this is another one of their tactics. They'll come at you with a plea bargain, and they know they ain't got shit on you. Yeah. But they, but they're still gonna come at you like that because. They're just trying to see what what you. They're, they're trying to see where you're at. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and um, uh, you know, unfortunately, that's just that's just the way it is, man. But but yeah, dude. So I'm like 19, man. And um, so the way the things ended up working out, man. My you know my people, man. They looked out for me. Um, they they got me a a, a pretty decent uh, attorney. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I I didn't in, end up doing, but like uh little a little a little over a little over two years like two and two and some change yeah. and um so but look man i'm the type of person like this like after i after i finished that the, the experience of just being confined um i was like man just this shit ain't for me man you know what i'm saying so i did everything that i could to make sure that i got off papers and all that shit man because yeah. i just didn't want I didn't want to be subjected to that to that shit no more. You know what I mean? I didn't. Right. I, I didn't want to. And fortunately for me, um, I think after that, I did like one little. I had a little violation. I did like six months or something like that on it. And that was yeah, that yeah, was yeah. pretty much the extent of my, um, you know, uh, uh, my time in the in the prison system and stuff like that. But yeah. um, as far as like other institutions and and and, and rehabilitation centers, man. Oh, you're in um, a different rehab every fucking other month, man. Yeah. <laughs> You know, for real. God damn, you done been in probably fucking eight of them in the last yeah, couple and, of years. And, and, and that's true, bro. And that's, you know what? And, and and this is what I tell myself, bro. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> at least, at least. Look, uh, I think I, I've done, I've, I've been came and visited you at a couple yeah. of them. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, and I'm like, well, hey, man, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, sometimes you got to laugh to keep from crying. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, bro. Um, So. This last, uh, this last place I was at, man, was uh, it, this place was wild, man. Um, like, uh, it's out there in the mountains, and these people out there just it it, it was like you could literally go there and, and and chill for for forty five days. There was just a little forty five days, but you could literally go there, smoke cigarettes, hang out, talk to the gals and shit, and 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 just you know what I'm saying. They didn't, they just didn't give a shit. But I say that to say. So I had to take it upon myself, man, to uh, to really put forth some effort because Be I clean. told myself when I went in there, number one, that because a lot of times what I'll do is I'll go to these rehabilitation centers and then I'll be there for about a week and I'll start feeling like shit and I'll say, fuck this, I'm going to get high. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I told myself, number one, that I was going to complete it. And number two, that I had to put some fucking work in, man, because because if I'm not going to put any effort into my recovery, then I'm, I'm, I'm already fucked. The way I chased that dope out there, if I can put yeah. half as much energy into my recovery as I did chasing that shit, I might be all right. 
You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And, um, you know, the fact of the matter is this, that n right now, um, and, and this is why, you know, I know you, you had mentioned something about, you know, us starting a, a recovery, you know, so a channel about recovery. And I think it's, I think it's awesome, man, because there's a lot of people, man, that are. I think it'll help you. I think it'll help you yeah, a lot. It, it will. I know it'll help me. Yeah. And, and, and not only that, but there's a lot of people out here that are, they're looking for somebody to, to get behind or they're looking to for relate to and right, just relate to, can relate to exactly. Yeah. And, 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 and it's like, you know, unfortunately, a lot of the people these days, I mean, you've got a lot of uh, recovering addicts that are, you know, that are, um, you know, in these rehabs and have, have gone and got their, you know, their, their bachelor degrees and, 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 uh, substance abuse counseling and this and that. But yeah. there's a lot too, that are just, you know, they ain't never been there. They're, they're, they, they, there. they learn from a textbook. You can't, right. you can't relate to an addict by reading the textbook. You know what I'm saying? Yep. You, yep. you have to have lived that life. And, um, so, so I say that to say, man, that I'm just, you know, I'm at the, I'm at the point right now where like, like you said, I think it would, it would make me, so the people that are, that are watching, right. It'll make me accountable to them in the sense that if I go out here and fuck up, then they're going to follow they, they or they, or you're going right. to let them down. Right. You know and what I'm saying? You helping them out. Exactly. And if you ain't there for them, you letting them down. Exactly. You and, know, and you know, and, and on top of that, man, it, it's just, um, I know that I, I know that I'm capable of being successful. I just have to put I have to put things in place and 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 you know what I'm saying, for example, the people I hang around, you know what I'm saying? The places that I the places that I hang at, all yeah. that stuff. I gotta put all that stuff in 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 place to keep me from from going back out there. And I'm gonna tell you my number one, this is probably my number one problem is the females, man. Female, I was gonna oh. just say the same thing. <laughs> I was gonna say the same shit. I was gonna say the same shit. It's the it's the motherfucking girls you're always with. Yeah, man. <laughs> and it's like, and it's yeah, bro. It's, it's it, you know, unfortunately, I'm like shit. You know, I and it'll start out like, all right, we're having fun. I ain't getting high, but eventually, if if it's the you know, if it's a girl who's into the same shit I'm into, eventually, so we everything, is fun, yeah. everything is funner. Everything is funner. When you with a girl and you getting drunk and you getting high, yeah, I mean, the sex is funner. Everything is funner, bro. Listen, trust me, I know. Chris, you know me when I was getting high. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You know, I, you know, so you know, bro. My whole life was based around. It, it was not my whole life. Let me take that back, bro. You know, I was able to. <laughs> you know, I was able to control a lot of what I did. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. But my shit was on some like, man, let's get high. I'm gonna invite like ten fucking girls over to the fucking house. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to, I mean, do you, do you know, bro, I literally have yeah. 10 or 15 fucking people well, at my crib at yeah. one time. Everybody's in there getting high. Everybody's getting drunk. Everybody's getting fucked up. Right. But I know the end part of that night. Exactly. And that's going to exactly be a lot of fucking, there's yeah. going to be a you lot of that, sex going on. That for, a, for a night or a weekend, yeah. but then you cut it off. Say, all right, that's right. it. I got to, I got to get my, see, and where me, I'm like, I don't want the fucking party to end, right? I'm, I'm trying, I'm chasing that motherfucker. I used to hate to watch the sun come up. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, and and you know, eventually it gets to the point, like, you know, I and and this is what I do sometimes, right? I get up, I get my weight back up, get to working out, get to feeling good, and the next thing I know, boom, you know, I you reward I start, yourself, you reward right, yourself, right? And I start forgetting, I start forgetting what it felt like to kick a dope habit, to be laying in a bed puking and shitting on myself. You see yeah. what I'm saying? I start forgetting yeah. what that felt like. And I think, all right, I can go out and, and, and just get, I'm just, just going to get high tonight. You know what I'm saying? And it never, it never ends up being that way. Not for me because see the type of, the, the type of addict that I am, um, I'm going to ride that motherfucker till the wheels fall off. No you doubt. know what I'm saying? And no then doubt. I'm going to push that bitch as far as it'll go until I can't yeah. push no more. You know what I'm you saying? Remember, it, you, you remember, I used to call you and be like, man, bro, I'm having like full-fledged fucking panic attacks and anxiety attacks. I was getting yeah. so high, bro, yeah. and standing up for so many days at a time, bro. Like, I was literally, I thought I was dying. I told you, man, I yeah. was one night, man, I told you, man, I was one night, man, I had the damn YouTube on. I had the phone <laughs> on laying on my chest, listening <laughs> to sweet, soothing sounds. <laughs> Of, of, of rainforests and shit with a sock hanging out of my mouth, man, with 911 on speed dial. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready to call the ambulance. I think I'm getting ready to die. I'm laid up in front of a fan with a sock in my mouth. You right. know, and, you know, so I mean, dude, and, I, and the thing about it is, 
is that I'd be like, man, I ain't doing that shit no more for a while. Man, yeah. two or three days, I go back in the weight room. I feel good. Dope was yep. never my thing. You know, I've always right. fucked with, with either the meth or the coke. coke so yeah. I've always been on something that had me up and amped the right. fuck up. And alcohol right. always started it, man. So as soon as I'd start doing alcohol, meth or coke it was, I didn't care which one you had. You know what right. I'm saying? Because one, it, they were both right. the same to me while I was drinking. Exactly. Yeah, sure. you know, I would always prefer to do coke, but hey, meth or doing a it snack. Was there. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Yep. And, and, but the outcome was totally different, you right. know, come six, seven o'clock in the morning Damn, when I can right. lay down off the, off the coke, be like, all right, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Where no, that motherfucker Mev was like, bitch, you won't lay down when I tell you, you lay down. That, you know no what I'm saying? Get your, you, ass, get be, your ass, get your ass back up and party. Yeah. All day. And I bug out, bro. And I'd be like, man, Chris, Hey, I, my, I feel like my throat's closing up, man. What's going on with me? <laughs> hey, hey I'll be thinking I'm gonna die, bro. Like I'm, yeah. I'm literally. And listen, and 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 I know what you're saying because I was like, man, man, I'm done with that shit, man. Going through the yep. sickness, I wouldn't go through the sickness, but I would put myself through so right. much anxiety and yeah. fear of death, like yeah, I'm it's dying. A, it's a mental thing, yeah. Mental shit, man. The anxiety and the turmoil that I would put myself through, I felt yes. like I was hollow on my insides, bro. I felt yep. like like there was nothing inside of me, and Goodness. then. Mm -mm -mm. I would come back. I would come back two or three days later. And then I'd be like, man, I ain't doing this shit no more. Two or three days later, I'd be in the gym working out. Okay. Time to reward myself again. Yep. Let me, let me start drinking. As soon as yep. I start drinking, I'm like, all right, I need something to even this, this out. I need something yeah. to even this liquor out. Yep. So the first thing I'm looking for, I, I need that. I need some powder. Well, we ain't got no powder. My, you know, uh, we got, we got a little bit of meth. Well, it, well, that, that'll come on. Let's go. You know what and I'm saying? Look, that'll do. I'm going to tell you something about that meth, right? It's done. It's done. Hit the streets in such a way down there here. There ain't even which, no coke, dude. It, it, around our way in the seven cities in Richmond, you already know. Ain't yeah. nobody. Ain't nobody doing coke no more. Who's a cokehead? You can get a fucking. You can get an ounce of meth around here for five hundred dollars, dude. I mean, it's That's crazy. It, they flooded the streets with it to the point where motherfuckers are giving it away, dog. They're giving it away. So Nuts. unfortunately, it's creating a whole new demographic of addicts. You know what I'm saying? And it's like. You know, these people are, and, and it, it it's just, yeah, because, you know, at, back in the day, man, I, it, I, I, I never even tried meth for until about a couple of years ago, man. Yeah. Because um, it just wasn't in, it wasn't in Virginia like that. That was yeah, something yeah, yeah. like, that was something out your way. Out in you know, the mountains or something. Hey, I remember when it was out in the mountains before it even came to the cities. Right, right. That shit was all the way out in the woods somewhere, bro. Like that, that was, all, all we knew about was doing that shit was, Motherfucking rednecks and bikers and shit. Right, like, we exactly. had, like that shit wasn't that shit wasn't the, you wouldn't hear that shit in the city. Yeah. We had crackheads and cokeheads and dopeheads Look. and pillheads and shit. You never heard of that shit. But when that shit came, it took everything else was irrelevant. Yep. <laughs> you were either and you were either a dopehead or you were a meth head. All the rest of that yep. shit fell apart. You got you got that shit right. And really low key, man, even the like I, the way I seen it happen, man, like even some of the dope boys out there were like. They're doing this shit, dabbling in this shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's just because the shit, it, it, you're it around it all the time. You. And it'll, yeah, and it'll keep you going for so long. All but day. Man, my, truckers, my, truckers yeah. used to do this shit, man. I remember back when I was driving with somebody as a team, I was totally against that shit then. So I never tried it. But right. this motherfucker right. would do the shit. And this before we had electronic logs. This motherfucker would do this shit stand for three or four days at a time. And I would be bugged out because I'm like, man, this dude ain't slept forever. And I'm thinking like this bitch gonna fall asleep on the wheel. Yeah, but no doubt. This motherfucker, and this really, I was, I was, I think I was 22. I just came home from my first prison. No, 20, no, 24. I just came home from my first prison bid. And man, this dude would do, he would do weird shit. He'd be sitting in the truck and he'd start doing shit like this. Oh, yeah. He'd start tap, he tapped the door and shit. And I'd be looking at him sitting up front and I was scared to death to sleep because I didn't know what the fuck was going on with this guy. You know what I'm right. saying? Like I, I was like, man, dude, I was, I was paranoid. I was petrified. Anytime that I would be in the back sleeping in the bed, I, that bitch hit a bump. I think we're gonna hit a goddamn tree or something, man. I jump back up out of the bed, man. You good? You all right? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, that shit, that shit, that shit was crazy. Look, but back then, you, bikers, truckers, all that shit. That was, that was all that ever we ever heard using that shit. Absolutely, absolutely. And look, look I'm gonna tell you what was my end with the meth thing, man. Because well, number one. You know, I was always my, my thing was the downers, man. I, I love the benzos. I love the, yeah. the opiates. But uh, I I was I had I had done some shit one night, man, and I had a seizure. And and I was like, normally when people have seizures, you black out and you don't remember yeah. nothing. Well, I, I the shit kept me awake through it, man. And I was I, I thought I was gonna fucking die. Um, it was 
I, I ended up blacking out like maybe halfway through it, but it, I, I was, if anybody knows what it's like you know, seeing somebody have a seizure, it's, it's a fucking nightmare. And I was yeah. conscious through half of the motherfucker, man. And I was like, that's it. I can't, you know what I'm saying? That's just going to fucking kill me, man. But, um, so it, you know, anyways, man, another thing too, man, I, I want to mention while we're talking about stuff like that. So, you know, Richmond has always been a state, I mean, a city, excuse me, that is, was, was always flooded with, with heroin. Right. Yeah. Without always. This fentanyl. Portsmouth and come, Richmond were always, Baltimore, Portsmouth and Richmond, man, was always known for dope. Right. And, and now this fentanyl has hit the street, man. And see, I come, you know, I started getting high in 99. Right. And yeah. It was, it, you know, you know, through most of my, most of my get high years, uh, it was, it was all, it was heroin, but this fentanyl, this hit the street, man, it has changed the game completely, changed the yeah. game completely, man. And, and it's, and it's taking folks up out of here, man. Listen, I can, I can count 10 people that I lost just last year. 10 the fentanyl is what's killing died. everybody. It ain't, it ain't the it's, dope. It's the fentanyl. It's the fentanyl, man. And, and unfortunately, man, people are cutting everything with that shit, man. They're yeah. cutting. I heard they started cutting, cutting coke with it. Yeah. I heard they cutting coke with it. Yeah, and, and and man, look, I had a friend, a friend of the family, man. His daughter, she was 18 years old, man. Rest her soul. And uh, she, she, they you know, they're pressing them little, them zany bars now, and they're pressing them with fentanyl in them. She ate one of them bitches and it killed her, man. 18 year old girl, man. Beautiful little girl. And I, you know, it's just, it's the the thing of it is, man, is, you know, I, you know, and I sit here and can laugh about, you know, the shit I did when I got high and all that shit. But really, the truth of the matter is, man, is there's nothing glorious about putting your life on the line every time you want to put a substance in your body. You feel what I'm yeah. saying? You're, yeah. You're playing. You're playing Russian roulette every time you want to put that substance in your body, man. Because the thing especially of it is, now, especially now, because yeah, of the fentanyl. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, 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 you know, the, the fact of the matter is this, um, the people that are out here cutting shit, they don't have a fucking clue what they're doing. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So yeah. they might, you might get a bash that's like, oh, it ain't shit one day. And then you might, you know, you might go back tomorrow and get something that's going to take you the fuck up out of here. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And it's just, yeah. that's, that's just the way it is, man. And so, you know, for me, um, I've just gotten to a point, man, where I'm just, it's like, it's time to leave the party. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I yeah. want, you know, I'm, I'm 40 years old and I ain't never really lived a life of any value, man. You know what I'm saying? It's all been, right. it's, it's all been chase shit. And, you know, I mean, I just, you know, I, they say this, they say when the pain gets great enough, you'll do something else. And, uh, yeah. and man, the pain has gotten great enough, man. And I, you know, so. So that motivates me to, you know, man, to, to, to do some things differently so that I have a chance to succeed because, you know, if, if, if I can't change my way of thinking and I can't change my behaviors, man, I'm going to, I'm going to end up, you know, like you said, you won't hear from me about, uh, you know, a month from now I, I quit it. I'm not on, you know, I'm not on the social media. I'm not answering the phone and shit. You already yeah. know what time it is. You said it yourself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and it's unfortunate, man. Um, and and you know, I can laugh and shit about it, but the fact of the matter is this, man, it's it's uh it the you know, the disease of addiction, man, if more people would educate themselves on it, man, it's uh it is. I mean, the uh the DSM, it's a it's a manual that all the medical professionals go by. You know, they just recently well, it's been probably about six or seven years ago, they they classified the disease as addiction, the disease of addiction as a, a, a chronic illness or a chronic right. disease, meaning that it's fatal. And it, it, and it, it, it is, man. Uh, but I will say this, you know, and there's a lot of people that that uh, they don't understand. You know, they think it's a moral dilemma. Right. That we right. struggle from. It's a moral dilemma. You, it, you can change your behavior. You just you just don't want to fucking change. But that's not necessarily yeah, no the doubt. case. You know what I'm saying? And the, and, the, yeah. and the fact of the matter is this. But the, and this is the one thing that separates the disease of addiction from other chronic illnesses. If I truly if I truly want to get better, I can. A motherfucker that's got cancer, they can want to get better all they want. They might they not. Can. Yeah, you see exactly. what I'm saying? 
Exactly. And, and that's and that's what separates the disease of addiction from other chronic illnesses, man. And right. um, so that gives me hope. You feel what I'm saying? Um right. to, to have a shot to uh to get out here and to be something other than uh you know a, a motherfucking a, 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 a junkie or a dope fiend. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um and I know and you know I say that, but I don't I don't look at myself in that light. You know what I'm saying? Um because I know that I'm capable of so much more. You know what I'm saying? Ah, you are, bro. Like I said, I see you fi like physically, you know, look good, get up, fucking yep. be, you know, big as shit, cut up, yep. and fucking next thing you know, fucking fall straight back off. It's yep. like, man, it's like you just, it's, it's like you running on a treadmill. Yeah. Yeah. You know and, what I mean? And, and see, not only that, just even what you just said right now, you know what I'm saying? It that's That ha that takes a toll on your body, too. You put yep. on 20 pounds, and then you lose it in a month, and you yep. put it back on, you know, and I got to, I have to keep all this in mind because I'm not getting no younger. You know what I'm saying? No we doubt. ain't getting no younger. You know what I mean? And uh, I mean it. You know it is what it is, man. And I'm just I, right now. I'm I'm in I'm in a position, man, where I really uh want to advocate for people out here that uh, are, are come from the same you know come from the same place and, and struggle with the same deal with the same struggles that I deal with, man. Because the fact of the matter is, each and every addict has the possibility to recover and right. it's just a matter of how bad do you want it how bad do you want it yeah simple as that you know what i mean and like you said man it's it all like like you know you know how i was i would just be like man i hey i could do it on a weekend and be and be good you right. know what i'm saying but it's like and then and then do it every couple weekends and motherfuckers couldn't understand it but like man how the fuck does mouse do that type of shit but it was all my whole party in was based around the scene Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. It wasn't based it was a around social thing. It was a, it social, was a social thing for me. It was right. never an addiction. It wasn't something that like, damn, I want that shit. I need that shit today. And it definitely wasn't a sickness. I've never fucked with dope at all. Right. Um, right. You know what I'm saying? So that's never been my thing. Um, it's always been uppers. It's always been either meth or coke. You know right. what I'm saying? I've always, that's always been what I've what I've liked. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I never smoked crack, and I've never smoked meth, and I've never stuck a needle in my arms. And the, right. you know, don't get that right. The only reason why even meth was even even in the in the ball game is because I was drunk and it and if there was right. no coke around that just yeah. replaced it you know what I'm yeah. saying so trust me it was always and I'm not saying one is better than the other right you right, know what I'm right. saying but but one kind of fucking is man well, you know what I'm saying and because well, I see I see a lot of I, I I know a lot of guys man that I grew up with that we were social coke heads you know what I'm saying yeah. that went yeah. to college that did great I never seen a lot of people and I'm talking about and I'm talking about crackheads either but everybody that I know that is on meth their lives are fucked. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't know yep. anybody that's on meth religiously that has a good life. You no, know what I'm saying? Right. I know doctors and shit that were doing powder. You know what I'm saying? Right. So right. like I know chiropractors at my gym that were doing coke. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like there's a social that there's there's a Playboy well, social level and then there's a fucking straight junk ball level. And and the and the worst I've right. ever felt junkie wise was always off of meth. Always. Oh, sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Always. And, and unfortunately what happens is People, because the thing about meth is, man, people can get dependent on the shit to where it's like they need man, it. To, right. They need it to function, right? Man, I, yeah, I, I, they just need it to wake up in the fuck. It's like their coffee. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. And and so what that does is it 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 it, it becomes a lifestyle. And then you know the next see see any Out of addiction. Control. Yeah, any any real addiction is bondage. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's a form of bondage. It is. And, you know, don't don't get me started on the, uh, you know, how I feel about it. I think that a lot of the drugs are put in low income areas to keep people oppressed. Um, but that's a whole nother that's a whole nother topic. Yeah, for yeah, yeah. Yeah. Time. yeah. Just like but, uh, just like guns, just like guns and liquor stores. <laughs> yeah, for sure. No doubt. One hundred percent. Don't get me on my conspiracy. Theories. Just like church, just like church is chicken. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, I ain't never seen. Hey, I ain't never seen a one church. I ain't never seen a church's chicken in a good neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> whenever, whenever I see a church's chicken, I know I'm in the hood. <laughs> no shit, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Yeah, man. And and look, I want to share this too, man. I just I want to shine some some light on the. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to tell you this story, right? I'm shining some light on the mindset of the addict um and how when you get so caught up in it 
you were willing to lay your life down for a fucking substance. At least I was. And yeah. um, I'm, but but here again, you know, a lot of people, man, they've never dealt with, you know, my family, for example, they've never dealt with an addict like me. They don't know what it's like. I'm a different type of animal. You know what I'm saying? And not in a good way. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But the, and, and, and so I can't do things that normal people can do. Like, you know, like I've, I've come to terms with the fact that I'm probably not ever going to be able to drink alcohol again. But I'm, I'm I'm all right with it. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I me because I know that if if I even if I if I let up one little bit, then I'm going to I'm going to be, uh, you know, I, I'm subject to be in a worse position than I was before. So anyways, yeah. so. I was so, this, so, so, did, so did alcohol, did alcohol bring you, so if you drank alcohol, did that make you want to go do other drugs too? Not necessarily. Um, right. And I was never, I was never a big drinker, right? I was just always just a social drinker, right? Yeah. But see, I feel like the whole, just, just by me even ingesting any substance that is going to alter my mood or my mind is, is no good for me because it, it just, it can snowball. You know what I'm saying? It, it just right. in my, in my case, and I'm, I'm not saying that's the case for everybody, but in my case, if, you know, if I allow myself to indulge in any, any substance that alters my mind or my mood, um, I want to do something else. Right. And, and it lowers your inhibitions and all that, all that good shit. But, um, so I was in, I was in Mosby court one time, right. Um, with these cats. And this is the way that the, the, the lifestyle it, for the people know, that don't know about Mosby Court, tell them what Mosby Court is. Yeah, Mosby Court is one of the uh, roughest uh, projects hoods in the city of Richmond. Um, and it's you know, them boys out there, man, especially them little young boys, they do not care, they will fucking kill you in a heartbeat. And it's like, you know what I'm saying? They, they don't give a shit, man. And um, yeah. So, so, you know, and I say that too, to say that, you know, I didn't mind going into these areas being, you know, dude, I was going into these areas at the age of 17. And when I was 17, I looked like I was 12. You know what I'm saying? These yeah. motherfuckers are seeing a, a kid that looks like he's 12 years old, bro, asking him for some fucking heroin. <laughs> They're like, what the yeah. fuck? Man, get the fuck out of here. You should be fucking uh, at school. You know what I mean? Anyways, <laughs> uh, so I was in Mosby Court one time, man, and I was with these, these folks that I paid them to give me a ride because, see, I woke up and I was sick, right? And I had to go get some dope. So I paid them. I gave these people $50 to, 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 to take me to go meet my plug, right? Yeah. So I end up somehow end up in Mosby Court, right? And little did I know that the people that was taking me, has, they, they seen I had, uh, I, and all I had on me after I gave them their money was $150, right? But they wanted that too, right? So they, they, had, they had set me up to get robbed so it's the middle it's like it's like this time of year okay and i see this guy walk past the car in this this hoodie this flight jacket with a hood on it with fur all on it. i said man what the fuck it's 90 degrees outside and i'm thinking you know what i'm saying i'm like what the fuck and he walks by a second time i said oh and i already I already knew what was getting ready to happen right so i pulled my money out my pocket and i stuff it in the seat because i was sitting in the back seat so i stuff it in between you know the back of the seat and the and the uh, bottom of the seat and the guy walks up to the car, taps on the window, reaches in his waistband, and pulls out a a, a a a a chrome forty a chrome forty five, a big ass forty five, right? And uh, opens the fucking door and puts that bitch in my face and says, "Give me your money now." I looked at him and said, "Uh, I, I was getting ready to say what money, but I couldn't even get it out." Wop, he busted me upside my head, right? Split my head open, pistol with me, um. And then he hit me a couple more times, man. And I, I was telling him I didn't have no money. And, and this is this is how my mind thought, right? Well, damn, I, I'm already dope sick. And this dude just busted me upside my head with the pistol. There ain't no way this motherfucker's getting my money. I'm going to get high today. He's going to have to fucking kill me to get this money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Hey, and that's, that. you know, oh, the, I want you to finish the story, man. But that's just funny because there was a dude I was locked up with, man. He said, man, he said, I'm a friendly drunk, but I'm a mean dope head. No doubt, bro. And and look, man, motherfuckers ain't playing with their dope. I'm telling you, man. And look, and that's the thing, man. I was willing, I was willing to lay my life down for this shit, man. And, yeah. and look, but guess what? 
He busted me upside my head, split my head wide open. That motherfucker didn't get my money. <laughs> Dope man got that money. Shit. But, but, uh, but no, man, it, it, it's just, that's that's the way that the addict mind thinks, man. We, we are willing to go to any lengths, any lengths to make sure that we can put that substance in our body, man. And it's, it's, yeah. you know, it's unfortunate, but it, 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 it is what it is, man. And, um, so that's what I'm looking to, uh, you know, combat, man. I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking to, 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 uh, you know, to put something out there, man, that so people can hold on to and, uh, you know, get behind maybe, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So, and when you and when you start and when you start your channel, man, let me know so I can post that out there. Let let Absolutely. anybody on here know if you want to give them anything like your social media, Facebook, Instagram, anything you want to give them other than your phone number, you can give them on here so they can get a hold of you, man. And stuff. Right on. Uh, yeah. So do sure. that. Do you, you talking close. about? You talking about you give it out on? on yeah, video you can give or? out your Insta. You can give out your Instagram or social media stuff, man. Just don't never give out your phone number on here. Um, right. But it, once you talk to people in private and shit or whatever, you can give out your phone number and stuff. But on my channel, man, uh, if, if if you if if anybody on here wants to get a hold of you, how could they get a hold of you? Um, it would really just be through Facebook, man, because uh, I really don't have an IG account. Um, it's all right. It's, give, uh, give me your give me, give me your Facebook account. All uh, right, yeah, it's it's Christopher Lampkin, L A M P K I N. Um, right. and you can get in touch with me on Facebook, man. And uh, yeah, man, if, if any, you know, you want to. Uh, DM me or, or whatever, man, and uh, yeah. anybody, man, you, you need to talk, you need a, a, a ear, anything, man. Um, exactly. You know, I'm all for I'm all for uh, networking and fellowshipping with other people. See, I, you know, I want to surround myself with people who have the same goals and aspirations that I do, right, and have the same agenda that I do. Um, and and that's that's really that's the only way that I'm going to be able to maintain some substantial sobriety. Um. So yeah, man, I'm a I'm a big I'm a big fan of, of networking and fellowship and all that stuff, man. And Mouse, I appreciate you, man, for even giving me this opportunity, man, because no doubt, bro. Um, people people need to hear stuff like this. You yeah. know what I mean? No, I know, I know. Like, man, like you know, um, you know, I know I I know that this is this is prison talk, man, but all this is is like I said, this is all associated together, man, one way for or sure. however you can look at it. Because for all sure. this same shit can in you in prison a lot of times. This ain't gonna. You're not gonna end up in a sobriety house. You're not gonna end up in a halfway right. or house or or, right. or, or, or uh, any of that. You're gonna yeah. go straight to prison, depending yeah. on how how this happens. When you get pulled over, what you got? That it, this could go a whole different route. For sure. You know what I'm saying? So Absolutely. it all it all comes together as the same thing, Absolutely. man. Absolutely. And when you you're know? talking about like re recidivism rates and all that shit, a lot of shit shit is due to addiction. You know what I mean? People, Everybody people, I know, man, is is always based behind drugs or money yeah. or girls. Yeah. Yeah. Almost everything that I, every, almost everybody I know in prison, is based around those three things. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? 100%. Now you got off, off brand people might, might have a, a murder charge or right, you right. know stuff like that. But even behind a lot of the murder charges, man, it's, it's based behind money or drugs. Absolutely. You know. 100%. So, you know. Yeah. Or behind a girl. You know. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt. Plenty of those. You know, for real. You know. <laughs> Plenty of those. No doubt. Yeah. All but, right, man. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. You coming on, man, and um. I'm yeah, gonna post this out tomorrow at five o'clock Eastern time, and I'll send you the link to it. Absolutely, and stuff, cool. man. And uh, yeah, it's almost been fucking forty five minutes, man. It's a good, good, uh, good, yeah, man. Good thing, I enjoy man. chopping it up with you, bro, for sure. Yeah, and I'll be back August, man. We'll be running fights again. You always come out to my there. fights when I'm out there, man. And uh, there. if you need me, you always know you can always call me. 100%. I'm always, you know, I'm always there. Me and Rob are always there for you. Yeah, no doubt. You already know. Yeah, but um. Yeah, Rob has been bro. running. Rob and Rollo has been running a lot of the fights out there yeah, in Richmond. Yeah, I know. And stuff, I, I, for I me. just talked to him. Uh, yeah, a few DJ days Swole. Ago, DJ Sw His name. His name's DJ Swole now. He don't like being called the Marine anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I ain't even had a chance to, to hear him DJ, but uh, he was telling oh, me. Oh nah, no, you ain't see him. You ain't see him. Um, you ain't see him. Um, try to get on the Muscle and Fitness magazine for people to vote for him to be on the Muscle he's and Fitness. Like, he's no. winning though. Yeah, that's just funny, bro. He's DJ oh, Swole. Yeah, he's, I, he's I, DJ. He's DJ Swole. He's DJ Swole now. He's getting on the Muscle and Fitness magazine and I shit. Loved it. I love it. Said, I said, Rob, you 100 years old, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's my dude, though, man. Yeah, mine too, man. That's yeah. my man right there, man. Good dude. But um, I'm going to holler at you, brother. Hey, I appreciate you, man. Hey, Thanks man, a lot, I appreciate man, for coming you, brother, on. for sure. And hopefully, man, anybody on here that's heard his uh, story that wants to reach out to him, 
that he, he listen he's starting his own channel i'll post out his channel when he starts when he does my get man. his channel up and running and he puts some videos out i'll definitely help promote his channel man my and man. um and that's and that's with anybody that comes on here that's trying to do the right shit man so yeah. um definitely holler at you man we appreciate you man love you g i'll see you, you i'll back, see you in august see you in august yes, sir 100%. all right bro one